Yeah. Uh, once again, welcome you all for this uh, course, data communication. And uh, so this is not lecture six, sorry. It needs to be uh, not lecture six. This is lecture five. Okay, so we'll continue with our discussion on protocols. And in this uh, lecture, the, we are going to, uh, uh, you know, learn these following topics uh, like data uh, encapsulation and decapsulation, addressing, multiplexing, and uh, demultiplexing. And uh, the objective is how this data communication happens. That's what the objectives of this lecture. So let's start with the encapsulation and decapsulation. So here I'm taking uh, two laptops. Uh, this is a laptop A and a laptop B. Okay, so now there is an intermediate device that is a router, right? Why did I call it as a router? Because I'm having three layers, physical layer, data link layer, and network layer. Now let's see that how these layer handles this data. So that's what, uh, encapsulation and decapsulation first. Now, why do we need this? Question is first, why do we need this? See, there are many applications that are running parallel. Like if I'm using an email application, not only email, I'm uploading my files uh, in some place, I'm going to my browser, downloading something. So there are multiple applications that are running in my system. So each of these applications are generating a data, which we call it as a message. Of course, here I have not uh, shown any header for it, but there is some sort of header. Totally, we call it as, including that, we call it as a message from an application. Fine. So email is having its own uh, structure. Of, uh, like we have HTTP, which generates a data. It's having its own structure. So we will call that as a message, right? So this message is now taken by the transport layer and it puts that into smaller pieces. Okay, so I'm not saying, I'm not, this figure is not saying that uh, the messages at all the layers, I mean, the size of this, uh, the length of this uh, data, what you see is same. No, no, I'm not saying that. Okay. Okay, it, it, it is going to vary. So we have a message. So the, the transport layer will divide that into very smaller pieces so that it can handle this small piece of data efficiently. And it is called as a user data. As I told you, it can be called, if it is a UDP protocol, you call it as a user data graph. If it is a TCP, it is called as a segment. It means that, see, if I ask you that segment belongs to a connection oriented or a connection less service the answer it is a connection oriented right because segment is is with respect to tcp and tcp is a connection oriented service now in the network layer this whole data from which i have a message and one header it will be it will be taken as one single chunk of data right and again it will add it will split that into smaller pieces and it will add one header, header the third. Just call this number as three and four. There are there is a different kind of structure for this header. So we are adding one. Uh, we are first breaking that into smaller pieces and you add a header. To tell that this data belongs to this layer. Fine. And the data link layer, again, it takes, it divides, it again breaks that into very smaller pieces, uh, these, and add its own header. So it is adding an header too. Right? So how many adders it has added? Headers it is, we are adding, we are seeing that there are three headers added. And the size of this message is now broken to a very smaller piece. And this frame is sent to the physical layer. A physical layer will treat everything as zeros and ones. It, it, it can only understand zeros and ones. So it will take these zeros. And, of course, computer will, is understanding only zeros and ones. In the physical layer, uh, it will 
treat now the information as bits, small pieces now. And they are converted to electrical signals. If it is a wireless, I need to convert them to electromagnetic signals. If I'm using an optical fiber, I will convert that to a light signal, correct? So based upon what kind of medium you are using, this physical layer will convert, convert that to uh, that kind of signal. Now it goes to the router. Now the physical device, again, it is having these headers that are added and uh, removed, right? So we are encapsulating my message into one header. So since I'm adding it, we call that as encapsulation. Now when it comes to the switch, the switch you need to decapsulate before, uh, before sending it to the upper. So it receives two, three, four and a message. And it will only send three and four, removing two. So that's called decapsulation. You take out this two, which belongs to the header. So if all the criteria at the data link layer is satisfied, then it will push this to the network. It, it sends it to the upper layer. So it is giving service to the upper layer, taking the service from the below layer. Please remember this. And once the job is being done there, with respect to data link layer at the switch. Again, it will encapsulate, uh, give it to the, uh, uh, what you call data link layer. Again, it will encapsulate and it will push it to the hardware layer. Okay. And the same thing happens with my system B. So encapsulation and decapsulation is at each of these uh, layers, the protocols are taking the message, breaking that into smaller pieces, adding their own headers and they do the reverse. That is the principles. If you just remember the principles of protocol layering, we need to have identical and opposite so that I can establish a duplex kind of. That's what is being done. Now, what is happening? See, I told you that there are many programs that are running in the applications, right? So we use a file transfer, mails, use some video applications, streaming applications, like, like in our online classes. So all these are applications, they have their own names, right? So we need to provide some sort of addressing to them, right? So the data is there. So we have received the data from the physical layer. They are converted to some uh, uh, data link layer. And uh, we need to see that that data belongs to HTTP, right? We need to push that to the HTTP application. So that requires some sort of addressing. For at each layer, we need uh, some sort of addressing because there are many protocols that are running. Uh, we need to take care of that. So that is uh, what we are discussing in this video. So we see that uh, for the application layer, uh, we have uh, addresses names. FTP, FTP, SMTP. And in the transport layer, they are called as port numbers. So TCP is running at one port, uh, uh, UDP is running in at one port number. So it is an ID that is given to the program. Right? Logical addresses are used in the network. That is our IP address. No? You should have you could have seen something like 127.128.10. something like this, which is IPv4 uh, kind of IP address. Or we can have uh, some IP addresses like 0000, 000, 000 dot, dot, colon, uh, 8008 colon, something like this, which are called as IPv6 addresses. So they are called as logical addresses. The network, in the network layer, uh, we are talking about the uh, what is called as logical addresses. Okay. Now the address in the data link, every device is having this unique address it's called MAC. I think most of you should have, should have heard about it. So the MAC address means it's a hardware address. And each laptop or a mobile or any communicating device which is there in the internet, if it is connected, then there will be one unique address. Called a MAC address, generally it is called as a MAC address. This is called a link layer address. It is, it is also called as NIC address. So whatever the programs, I mean, the data that we are pushing to, to, a, to a device, it is first identified with that address. If it does not belong to that address, right, then the data will not be received by that system. 
okay it will just reject okay and finally the physical we don't have any address there because we are just putting all sort of electrical signals on one single cable just put that and uh, it is the job of the data link layer to decide whether it belongs to this ma this machine or not so i'm, I'm sending one data right into the internet now i'm streaming this data and uh, who is going to receive this okay that needs to be decided by the data not everyone just uh, can come and get it of course uh, uh, if i connect it to the internet i can get it right so communication happens with the hardware through this link layer address. so the tcp ip protocol suit it is using five four addresses names for the application port numbers in the transport layer ip addresses or logical addresses in the network layer. it is uh, generally known as logical addresses and link layer addresses. we call it a mac id link layer addresses or it's called as a mac id hope you are with me i think you should have understood right so now as i told you there are many protocols running in the application layer, we are uh, learning, uh, running uh, file transfer and also HTTP. And uh, we are also doing the job of uh, domain naming system and the network management, managing the network. There are, uh, uh, you know, some uh, operations will be done in the management. Now, what do, uh, how does this system works? Okay. So if, some protocol like FTP and HTTP protocol, they need a connection oriented service. So they will push their data to the TCP. So we are multiplexing. We are multiplexing into one protocol. So each protocol, like now DNS and SMTP are multiplexed to get UDP. Now these two are multiplexed in the IP. Okay, we are not reading it separate. So all these data are mixed up, and IP uh, will take all this data and it will uh, forward it to, to the uh, data link, data. and uh, the job will be done. So, so one we call it as a multiplexing process. The reverse is also going to happen: demultiplexing. So IP address, I received a packet. Now that's I, I will now not call data, say something like that. The network layer, uh, uh, the, uh, the data in the network layer is called as a packet. <coughs> so the packets are received and uh, IP address will look whether I need to send it to the TCP or whether I should go with it based upon the port numbers. So it has decapsulated, right? It has decapsulated and identified that, okay, this belongs to this TCP and this belongs to the UDP. So it will demultiplex it. It will send that to the specific. Uh, transport layer protocol. Now the transport layer protocol has, is seeing that there are many applications running. So it has to again do the uh, second stage of multiplexing. So this is how uh, a TCP IP protocol suit will work. To summarize this, in a laptop, we have a hardware and also a software. And we need to connect two end machines so that the user can do communication. They cannot be directly connected using a wire, right? So we need to use a lot of intermediate devices. And the point that we need to remember, we don't have a circuit kind of establishment. So there is no circuit switching. All we are dealing is with the packet switching. So there is no permanent connection. So there are many intermediate devices that are present between these two. And these devices are in an unsecured network. Remember that your laptop and your friend's mobile device are connected to this unsecured. A lot of, uh, you know, security threats are there in that unsecured network. And we are running a number of applications. We are streaming, we are exchanging video, audio, we are putting uh, text messages, uh, document files, various types of things. So, all that are happening through our browser. So there's one more application. So all these needs to be 
properly organized. So TCP IP protocol suit is having a set of programs. It is having a number of hardware. Together, we are going to establish a communication. Fine. Hope that you are you are you have understood well what is a TCP IP protocol suit. To be simple, what is a data communication? Let us see, there is one more model, uh, which is a standard. It is called as International Organization for Standardization. So it is called as ISO. So don't take that as international standards for us. There is no such kind of thing. International Organization for Standardization. They are developed a model, which is called as OS, Open System Interface, which is actually a well thought process. A lot of meetings were held at that time. Uh, we find uh, like uh, while I was doing my course, uh, we started with the ISO model because that was a standard. TCP IP protocol suit is not a standard. So there in, in ISO OSM model, the first standard was developed telling that it should have a seven layers. Application, presentation, session, transport, network layer, data link layer, and physical layer. So let me, yeah. So we have seven layers. Application, presentation, session, transport layer, network layer, data link layer, physical layer. And then the protocol started to develop for these layers. So what are all the things that we need to do in the application? So services were defined for those services, protocols were defined. Similarly for presentation. Now how the data need to be presentation, that's what it means. Session, how the connection must be established. Then the transport, how this data need to be transported. So it, the transport layer in the case of the ISO model used uh, only the connection list. They didn't bother the connection. Whereas in the network layer, there are both. The data link layer and physical layer have also been very well standardized, but this system was never implemented. By the time uh, all the protocols were designed, the TCP IP is running excellent. So, OSI ISO model uh, is not there in existence, it's only there on the, in the books. So if we compare these two, we see that the three standards of the OSI are there in one uh, single layer, it's called application layer. Transport network data and physical layers are kept as it is with uh, modification of service system. Like transport layer in TCP IP, uh, you go with both the same kind of services. That's not true with the transport layer. Only connection. Whereas in the network layer, only connection less, but that's not correct in the in the OSM model. There they thought of using both kinds of services. Okay, so with that uh, fundamental theory, let's take some of the exercises and see what you can uh, do. So let's read this question. Uh, when the IP protocol. So we are having the, the network layer. It decapsulates the transport layer. Fine. So what I'm talking here, here. Right. So the network layer is what uh, I'm doing. I received at the network layer. Here I'm standing. And it will decapsulate. That means it is pushing it to the upper layer. That is a transport. What it says is, how does it know to which upper layer protocol? I mean, whether it should go for TCP or UDP, I mean, sorry, UDP or TCP. How does it know which upper layer protocol the packet should be delivered? How does it know? That uh, what it means is, yeah, I'm having a demultiplexing, right? So I am I'm having the packet here, it has been decapsulated. I mean, now, now we have to, this IP has to decide whether it has to go here or here, how it will decide, right? See that, let's look at that address. It will decide based upon the port numbers, correct? So there is a port number, some number is there for TCP, let's call it as number, uh, some X and there is some number 
why. I am not going in details of the uh, structure of the numbers. Okay? We will take that as our syllabus proceeds. For now, some uh, uh, illustration I am giving. So the IP will split. Now it has a, a decapsulated frame. It will look at the header. See this header, where it has gone. Yeah, yeah. It looks at this header. Okay, it looks at this header. It sees that, okay, it belongs in the, the tree. Well, encapsulated, it has stored that information from which uh, protocol it is coming, either PCP or IP or UDP, right? So that header will look and it will forward. So what is the answer for this? How does it know which upper layer protocol using port number? So you can uh, elaborate this discussion uh, or just write a simple line. But I suggest uh, you take some time, uh, you know, write the concept behind it. So that will help you in uh, remembering the concept. So let's take another example. I'll give you some time, so the another exercise. In an internet, we change the LAN technology. So you have to go back to the concepts of LAN. What is a LAN? Which layers in the TCP IP protocol suit needs to be changed? So we have seen uh, LAN can be done using in uh, four topologies, right? A mesh topology where I can take all the devices, connect all together. Or I will going to use a hub or a switch to connect, or a bus or a ring, or whatever it is. Which layers needs to be changed? So I'm using, a, let's take a, a star token, right? So there is a switch. So let me call this as uh, some switch I'm using, some net Z. Switch. Okay, and I'm connecting my PCs. Okay, so I'm connecting here, I'm connecting here, I'm connecting here. So let us assume that I am using a cable called as cat by cable. My, my boss will ask me to upgrade this network to CAT6. So instead of CAT5, I'll go for CAT6. Or he, he, I might also get, okay, let's change this whole network instead of using net Z. Let us take let ZG. And this could happen. So the hardware is corrupt. You want to change, you want to upgrade. So now you tell me which layers to change. So LAN use switch, not beyond. So in our previous uh, lecture, I talked about the switch. So which is that layer? So this will not be there, right? In a router, this is there. But in a switch, the network layer will not be in existence. So we have to work only with the data link layer and physical layer. So that's what the answer is, right? Now you have to justify why only those, why not not network layers? Because LAN does not use a router. If I'm use want to connect multiple LANs, then the router will come. So what, what do you mean by multiple LANs connecting up multiple LANs? It's called a WAN. Why do you think? So this is a homework that I would like to give you. Uh, so note it down. So I'll read it for you. Assume a system uses uh, five protocol layers. So the five, all the five protocols are there. Okay, if the application program first layer is generating hundred bytes, and then we are adding ten bytes at each layer, what is the efficiency of the system? So, what is the objective of this problem? Is to realize you people realize the uh, you know the learner that headers are reducing the efficiency of the system. 
but uh, they are uh, inevitable. They have to be done. So this is uh, the homework that uh, I want all of you to uh, solve and uh, uh, compare it with the or discuss with you uh, with you among yourself to know the answer. Okay, so that's the end of this lecture uh, uh, where I we touched upon this encapsulation and decapsulation. You should be able to, you know, uh, you know, explain them when you are with your friends or with anybody. You should be able to clearly make it very clear that what is happening in the network. We need to encapsulate. There is something demultiplexing. Sorry, decapsulation. We do multiplexing and demultiplexing. There is address mechanism uh, in the protocol suit. Okay, so in the next uh, lecture, we'll go to the last, the third part of the module one. So that is about the physical layer. Uh, so see you there. Bye.